Hey everybody, it's Dr. Sadowitz here. So I just wanted to show you a ICU chest x-ray and kind of go over what all these different things are on top of the patient or inside the patient. So yeah, this looks all kind of confusing, doesn't it? So let's just start from the very beginning. When I get a chest x-ray like this, I just I usually start with the endotracheal tube. So here we have an endotracheal tube coming down, right? You can see it coming all the way down. It stops about there. Well, the carina is here. This is where the trachea bifurcates. So you want the endotracheal tube at least two centimeters away from the carina. It's better if it's three or four, but hey, you know, they can't always be perfect. So yeah, we, I would just do a simple measurement from here to here and make sure it's at least two centimeters. Okay, now what about this catheter coming down here and coming down across the heart and looping this way? All right, well, this is a pulmonary arterial catheter used to be called the Swan-Gans catheter. I don't know if they still call it that. But here it's coming in the uh, internal jugular vein, brachiocephalic. Now it's in the SVC, that's superior vena cava. Okay, now it's entering the right atrium, going across the right atrium into the right ventricle. Now it's leaving the right ventricle into the main pulmonary artery. And now the tip is right here. It's sitting in the proximal part or the early part of the uh, right pulmonary artery, okay? All right, now what are these things coming down the middle? They're really bright, right? They're really dense. Well, these are just the wires. These are median stenotomy wires. So after your chest gets cracked, the surgeon's got to put you back together and he uses these wires to hold the, uh, hold the sternum together, okay? You always want to make sure those are nice and, and aligned. What's this piece of metal going across his heart here. Well, this is a left atrial appendage clip. And this patient also happened to have a mitral valve replacement. This is where the mitral valve lives, okay? And his, uh, I'm sure his left atrium was kind of big. And when that happens, uh, the left atrium doesn't contract so well. And so you can get thrombi that develop in the left atrial appendage, okay? Uh, you get poor blood flow in and out of there. And whenever you have that, that's just a nidus for a clot to form. And so a lot of times you'll put a clip across the appendage. And so that thrombus can't get out of it, right? You're basically clotting it off. You're sealing it off from the rest of the body so the um, left atrial appendage can't throw uh, thrombi to the rest of the body. Okay, so what's this catheter over here? Well, it's coming from the arm across the chest, and now it's in the SVC. Tip is about right there. Okay, this is at the caval atrial junction. This is just a pick line. Okay, and this is exactly where you want the pick lines to end up. This is where you want to dump high volume medic, uh, saline solution or uh, high volume medications and that kind of stuff. What's this line and what's this line here? Well, those are mediastinal tubes, right? So this patient had their heart operated on, okay, chest was cracked. And then after the surgeon or before the surgeon closes up, they put these tubes in to drain any uh, blood or fluid draining into the mediastinum after surgery. So they're called mediastinal tubes, okay? And they sit right next to the heart. Now what about this tube here and the tube on the other side of the chest? Well, those are chest tubes, okay? And uh, they'll drain pleural fluid, and if the patient somehow develops a pneumothorax, they can help treat that as well, all right? So we went through just about everything so far. What have we skipped? Well, what is this big thing here? Big round guy, and then this one, it's almost like a rectangle. These are external pacing pads. Okay, so uh, after surgery, uh, a lot of times they'll have these in place until the patient's own uh, heart can, uh, I guess, beat for itself. And um, perhaps they'll use this in place uh, to get the patient over, you know, surgery for a few days before a pacemaker is placed, okay? So that's what those are, those are external pacing pads. So another thing I wanted to show you here was uh, the lung parenchyma itself. You see all these tiny little lines out here? And you could probably see them on this side, although not as well. 
This is what we call interlobular septal thickening. This is a sign of heart failure. So let me show you what this guy looked like when he uh, came into the hospital earlier in the week. Uh, here he, he has the um, uh, pick line in place, right? Heart looks kind of enlarged. Left atrium looks big. Left atrium lives in this area. And I can measure from, you know, the left main stem bronchus to this wall here. And that can tell me if the left atrium is enlarged. But look at all these lines coming out of the hilum. Way too many lines. Okay. And then look at all these other lines out in the lung parenchyma. And these tiny little ones going up and touching the edge of the wall of the chest. Right? This is interlobular septal thickening, and this is what you're going to see with heart failure. You also can see uh, pleural effusions. So he's got a small effusion on the right and a small effusion on the patient's left. Okay, and that's all I wanted to go over with you today. You've got to take these little educational sessions and small tidbits, otherwise your eyes will glaze over and you'll fall asleep.